All right, hey guys. Today, or this video is on trigonometric ratios, or trig ratios. You can also th call them trig functions because they are a function and pertaining to trig. But what is trig or trigonometry? It, it is actually the study of triangle measurement. So, what does this mean? We've been doing trigonometry the whole entire time. Now, we're going to talk about these trig ratios, okay? Trig is a very important part of geometry. It's what we've been doing for the past good bit of time. So now we're going to actually just be defined it formally now. And we're going to talk about some trig ratios, okay? So, there are actually six total trig ratios, but we're going to talk about the three main ones, which are sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, these these three ratios, think of them, I like to think of them as trig functions because, of, because they are a function of an angle, but they also represent a ratio of the sides of a right triangle, hence why they're called trig ratios. So what they do is relate the angles in a right triangle to the sides of a right triangle in, in three different ways. So that's why it says each acute angle of a right triangle has the following trig ratios. So our first one we'll be dealing with is sine. Okay, so it's written S-I-N, and then you take some angle, and that's equal to a ratio. Our ratio in this in case will be the ratio of the leg opposite to the angle, and then to the hypotenuse. So our ratio will be opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so we look at our triangle to the left right here. We have angles A, B, and C, and then we have where C is our right angle. Then we have sides that are labeled lowercase a, lowercase b, and lowercase c. This we can we can represent the links. Those lowercase letters can represent the links of the sides. So. To set up our ratio, we said sine of an angle, so sine of angle A right here, is going to be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side of angle A is lowercase a, and that's over our hypotenuse, which is lowercase c. So for sine B, it'd be lowercase b over c, and that's sine. All right, next for cosine, it's a little bit different, but not much. It's written as cos in the angle, and it is just the ratio of the adjacent, so adjacent, all right below it actually, adjacent over the hypotenuse. So if we look at cosine of a, adjacent, we, we hear this word adjacent, it really just means the leg that's not opposite basically, okay? So it's, it, adjacent kind of means next to, so if I look at cosine of A, but want to find the adjacent side to angle A, it's just going to be side B. And that's, of course, over the hypotenuse, hypotenuse C. And then for cosine B, it'll be lowercase a over C. Notice that the cosine of A is the same as the sine of B, and the cosine of B is the same as the sine of A. That's kind of a useful thing, a little trick maybe to, to notice. All right, lastly, we've got tangent which is written as tan for short, and then of your angle. This is going to give us the opposite side over the adjacent side. So we don't even deal at all with a hypotenuse when we're dealing with tangents. So if you see a, um, a problem where we're trying to find two of the sides and both, like one of the sides and you're given another one, and both sides you're dealing with are legs, then you will most likely be dealing with the tangent. So tangent of A is our opposite, with lowercase a, over our other leg, which is B. And then for tangent of B, it'll be lowercase b over lowercase a. And that's our three trig ratios. We use them many times to find side links, and they're very, very common. You'll see them a good amount later on, too. And But right now, we're going to be using them to introduce and find some um, side links. All right, so this is a good thing to remember right here. So this is important, very important. It's called 
so ka toa. It's a very commonly known um, mnemonic device for finding a sine, for remembering sine, cosine, and tangent. You can kind of see what we're getting at. The S will stand for the sine, right? The O stands for opposite, so. And then the H stands for hypotenuse, which I'm going to abbreviate it with HYP. And cosine for the C and ka, adjacent for the A, and then hypotenuse as well. And then for toa, we've got T for the tangent, O for the opposite, and A for the adjacent. Excuse me. All right, so now we can work some examples. For these first three examples, our directions are to give each trigonometric ratio as a fraction in simplest form. So number one, we see we have all our sides given. That is very nice and helpful. So all we got to do is set up the ratios based on what we know about sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine, of course, is opposite over hypotenuse as we see above. So we look at angle A for sine of A, and we see that the opposite side is 5, and then our hypotenuse is 13. We cannot simplify that anymore, so that we're finished. For cosine of A, we take the adjacent side now, which is 12, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 13. And then for the tangent of A, we deal with the opposite, which is 5, over the adjacent, which is 12. And for A, we are finished. Now for C, uh, we see that the opposite of C is now 12 over the hypotenuse 13. Cosine of C will be 5 over 13 because 5 is the adjacent side. And then tangent, we're going to deal with 12 over 5. One neat thing to realize, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but these two are the same. Sine of A is equal to the cosine of C. You're, you're going to have that that sine, the sine of um, one angle is equal to the cosine of another angle. So same thing right here. And then the tangents of those two angles are just reciprocals of each other. I mean, one, they're flipped. So that's kind of neat to realize. Number two. So we're only given two sides in this one. So what do you think we have to do to find the third one? Well, we will, we've done it before. If we know two sides, we can find the third side of a right triangle. We do the Pythagorean theorem. So, and we're missing the hypotenuse, so all we got to do is say we want to call that hypotenuse C. I know by the Pythagorean theorem I can set up an equation 9 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. 9 squared plus 12 squared gives me 225, and that is equal to C squared. You take the square root of both sides to find that C is equal to 15. All right, now we've got what we need to be able to set up our ratios. So for W, our opposite side will be 12 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 15. This can be simplified if we, if we take out a 3 from the numerator and the denominator, we'll be left with 4 over 5. So for cosine of W, we look at the adjacent side to W, and we see that it's 9, and then that's over the hypotenuse, 15. And we can take out a 3 on top and bottom on this one as well and get 3 over 5. And then for tangents, we will take the opposite over the adjacents, and that will give us 12 over 9 simplified to 4 over 3. Okay, I'm not even going to look at my um, triangle right now. I'm going to use what we talked about right here with the, the um, sine of one being equal to the cosine of the other. So. I, for sine of x, I know it's going to be cosine of w, which is 9 over 15, or 3 over 5. And then cosine of x will just be the sine of w, which is 4 fifths. And then the tangents will be reciprocals of each other. So this will be 9 over 12, which is also 3 over 4. Okay? Now, last example for this portion. We're given... 16 and 30. We're given two sides again. We want to find the last side, but this time we're trying to find a leg. So we remember our, the from the Pythagorean theorem lesson, we can still solve for the leg. It's just a little bit different. So I'm going to call this leg A. So I'll have that A squared 
plus the other leg squared, which is 16 squared, equals 34 squared. All right, if I solve for a squared now, I get a squared is 900, so a has to be 30. If you take the square root of both sides, because the square root of 900 is 30. So I found the side, now I set up my ratios. Sine L gives me 30 over 34, which is simplified to 15 over 17, because 30 is opposite of L. Then our hypotenuse is 34. So then cosine L will be 16 over 34, simplified to 8 over 17. And then lastly, the tangent of L will give me 30 over 16, which is just 15 over 8. All right, now the second column is the easy column. Sine M is 16 over 34, because it's the same as cosine L, which gives me 8 over 17. 30 over 34, which is 15 over 17, and then the tangents are flipped. So 16 over 30, which is 8 over 15. And we have done three examples on how to set up trig ratios using these trig functions. And this is very useful. This is probably the, the easy part. Now we're going to use this to solve for side lengths. Okay, so the most important thing, first of all, before we even start, you will be using your calculator. Okay, and on your calculator, there is a mode for handling angle measures. Okay, and you want to make sure that your your calculator is in degree mode, or it could be set in radian mode, but it needs to be in degree mode. You'll usually go there's a mode button on most calculators, and you'll you'll find a setting for angle something, and you'll be able to set it to degree. If you if you don't know how to do it, I Google your calculator and say how to set to degree mode, or you can email me either one. But when you're doing these problems, they have to be in degree mode right now. All right. So again. So when we're solving these problems now that we, we know that we're in degree mode, um, I need to know, I'm going to be using these trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, but I need to know which one to use. So to figure that out, I look at the two sides that I'm given, okay? I'm, if I have an angle, then I look at the two sides. This x is an opposite side, okay? It's opposite to the angle. And then the 19 represents the hypotenuse. So since I have an opposite, and I have a hypotenuse. The only function that we have that deals with those two are is sine. So I'm going to take the sine of 28, and that'll be equal to the opposite, which is x over 19, which is the hypotenuse. Now to solve for x, I have to get rid of this 19 in the bottom. To do that, I'll multiply both sides by 19. That leaves me with 19 sine 28 is equal to x. And what we're going to do now is we're going to plug that in our calculator exactly like this. There's a sign button on every calculator or on the calculator. You most likely you'll have that button on your calculator. You plug in exactly nine sine 28, just like that. And that'll be equal to 8.9. And we're done. That's the answer. So your other side, that side length is 8.9. Okay. So for this one, let's look. What are we going to use? I have an angle. It, we have an opposite side. We're wanting to find an opposite side. And then we're, we are given a adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent, the only one that deals with those two is tangent. So I'll write tangent of 41 is equal to opposite, which is x, over adjacent, which is 32. We get a solve for this. I'll multiply 32 by both sides and get 32 tangent of 41, which gives me x. So plugging that into our calculator, again, you'll have a tangent button as well. We get that x is equal to 27.8. All right, number eight, or number six, my bad. <laughs> All right, what are we given this time? I'm given the angle, of course, an adjacent side to that angle, and then the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuses give me cosine. So cosine of 21 is equal to the adjacent, which is x, 
divided by the hypotenuse of 26. Multiply 26 by, uh, by both sides and we get 26 cosine 21 is equal to x. So uh, plugging this into our calculator using the cosine button, we get that x is equal to 24.3. All right, so again, number seven, we're given an angle and an opposite side and an adjacent side. This uses tangent, so I'll set it up, but I won't solve the rest of it. So tan 55 is equal to x over eight. We, we, you finish this one solving like number five. All right, a little bit different now. This time we're trying to find the hypotenuse, okay? So in number eight, we, so we were trying to find the hypotenuse and we're given the opposite side of that angle. So opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So this will be sine 33 is equal to our opposite 15 with the X on the bottom for the hypotenuse. Now, X is in the denominator of a fraction. I cannot solve for X that way. I have to get it out of there. And so to do that, to get rid of a fraction, I just multiply both sides by x because it's going to cancel on the right side. So I'll be left with x sine 33 is equal to 15. Now I still can't solve yet. I have to get rid of the sine 33. We know that this is just a number. Okay, sine 33 is just a number and I don't want to put in my calculator just yet because I can make it a lot easier in a second. So if I divide both sides by sine 33, I'm left with x being equal to 15 divided by sine 33. Okay, and I can plug now. I can plug that directly into my calculator. You type in 15, then the divide sign, then you click that sign 33, and this will give me x equals 27.5. Okay, now number nine. This one we have an angle, we have an adjacent side, and then I apply this. So let's adjacent and hypotenuse gives me cosine and it's equal to 36 over x. Similar way to solve this next one, we multiply both sides by x, get x cosine 43 equal to 36. So x is just 36 divided by cosine 43. And so x is 49.2. All right, so there's a, there's a trend you're seeing. If there's x in the bottom of the fraction, when we set this ratio up, we know that x is just going to be equal to whatever that um, the psi length we're given divided by the cosine or the trig function. So let's use that to do this one. So what, what am I given? I'm given an angle, an opposite side, and I'm trying to find the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent is tangent. So tangent. 72 is 25, which is opposite over x, which is the adjacent. Look, this looks very similar to the previous two problems, and we know they were solved. They ended up looking like x being equal to the other side, which is 25, divided by the trig function, which in this case is tan 72. Plug that in my calculator, I get that x is equal to 8.1. Okay, number 11, this, is, this one is very similar to one of the ones we've done before, so I'll let you work that one out and figure out which one you got to do. Number 12, we have Jake. He's leaning a 12-foot ladder against his house. So if we draw like the wall of his house right here, then we're going to draw the ground as well. Okay, I can draw. We're going to assume the ground makes a 90-degree angle with the house. So he leans this 12-foot ladder up against the house. So we know that this hy the hypotenuse right now is going to be 12 feet. And then we says that the angle formed by the ladder and the ground is 68 degrees. So I'm wanting to find how far from the base of the house did he place the ladder. So we're trying to find the adjacent side to this angle that we've formed. And we're given the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse gives me cosine. So cosine of 68 is equal to x divided by 12. So 12 cosine 68 
68 is equal to x. So x is equal to, if we plug into our calculator, we get 4.5 feet. Remember to put your units because we're dealing with a, a word problem right now. And that is the answer. Very good. Okay, next, a ramp is loaded to you is used to load suitcases onto an airplane. Airplane. I'll do my best to draw an airplane. Wow, can't get a better airplane than that. Look at those wheels right there. Anyway, so our car, say our cargo uh, door is right here. And we have a ramp up to that cargo door. Okay, here's the ground. So here's our. Ooh, that's a beautiful ramp. Do not judge my drawing. Okay. And then we know that the cargo door, which is right here, is seven feet. So this is seven, it's a right triangle. We're wanting, we know that the angle formed by the end of the ramp right here and the ground is 25 degrees. I wanna find the, how, the length of the ramp. So the ramp is the hypotenuse in this case, and we know an opposite side. So of course we use sine, sine of 25, is equal to 7 over x and we know how to solve these using the, the same form when x is in the bottom we have that x is equal to that other side divided by the trig ratio which is sine 25 so x is about 16.6 feet and that's it for that one and actually that's it for all trig ratios guys uh, the next Two pages in your notes that I gave out are just practice problems for you and then some of them get a little bit difficult but you know what I'll go ahead and do one of these with the two triangles because they look a little bit tough so what do we do here let's look at number 12 if I have I'm trying to find what DC so this I'll call this X okay I'm trying to find DC but so what I'm going to, I would look at this right triangle on this triangle on the right. I know this is a right angle, but I only know an angle and one side. And I don't know, I don't know one side. I don't know any sides actually. I only know one angle. So I need to find at least one side of this triangle to be able to find X. But so I look at this left triangle and I'm given a side and an angle. So I can use maybe this triangle to help me solve this triangle. The, the key thing to notice here is that these two share this side BD, which I'm going to call Y. Okay, so to solve, for, if I can solve for Y right now because I have one side and one angle. So I just need to figure out what trig function to use. So I have an angle, I'm trying to find an opposite side and I know a hypotenuse. So opposite of a hypotenuse is sine. So I can set up and say sine of 54 is equal to opposite side y divided by 20. So y is, y is equal to 20 sine 54. And then plugging that into our calculator, we get y is equal to, give me a second, uh, 12, 16.2, sorry, 16.2. All right. So I'm gonna put 16.2 down here. Now, I now have a side of this triangle, okay? I am given an angle, I know an opposite side, I wanna find the adjacent side. So I use, of course, tangent. So tangent of 28 is equal to 16.2 divided by y. So y tangent 28 is equal to 16.2 so y is equal to why am I saying y? I mean x sorry x x is equal to 16.2 divided by tangent of 28 so putting that into our calculator we get that x is equal to 30 0.5 which is the value of DC and that's what we were trying to find so it's just kind of doing two different sine functions there so 13 try to do it replicate replicate 
somewhat similar to what I did in 12 for 13. And that's the end of this lesson. If you have any questions, as always, please email me at hunter.patent at cpsb.org and go ahead and try to finish all these homework questions. Thank you.